It's part two of the giant Rhydon snake robot. So this is the small one that I built a while ago and you can check that out in my channel. And now I'm making one big enough to ride on. This is half of it, but this piece goes and links to another two segments which I built last time that you can check out in last week's video. So each of these segments has got a driven wheel in and it's got two wiper motors that are gonna act as servo so it can bend in both directions. It's definitely strong enough to ride on and this time we need to put the electronics in and some sort of seat to sit on and some sort of control system to drive it. So the aim is that it can bend up and down and left and right. I'm not sure if it's actually going to carry my weight and be able to bend up and down to go over obstacles very well because the servos aren't that strong, but it's definitely an interesting way of steering and we'll see how it works at the end of the video. First of all, we need to turn those wiper motors into servos, so they're going to need some feedback. So I've got some heavier duty pots here than the normal audio ones that I would use on small projects. And we've got a 3D printed T5 pulley with a captive nut and a grub screw. That fits onto the pot and the pot fits onto a bracket. And that mounts onto the mount, which I made last time, for the servo. So on the servo itself with its steel servo horn, I've got another 3D printed part I'm going to glue and zip tie down. That fits neatly over the nut on the wiper motor. And then the feedback pot is going to fit with a belt so that we can adjust its exact position and that fits onto the bracket that I made last time. So when the wiper motor turns, the servo turns its pot and we can get the feedback. There's lots of 3D printed parts in this project, including all of the pulleys, all of the wiper mounts and all of the flexible linkages between the parts. So just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out 3dfuel.com. So we've got our pulleys and our pots all fitted and that's on both sides on each of the segments, so there's six in total. Each unit of the snake is going to be quite modular, so in each one there's an electronics tray with an Arduino Mega, a battery mount, and also somewhere we need to mount two motor drivers for each of the two wiper motors. And there's also an ESC for those hoverboard motors. So we've got three of those together, and those are linked together with a serial bus. We have one which has got a radio receiver to receive data from my remote control, and two which are just going to receive data from that one and control the other modules. There are actually four sections, but the front section doesn't have any wiper motors to push another section, it just has a hoverboard motor, so we don't really need dedicated electronics there. I've been thinking about where to put controls for this so I can actually control it. Of course, we've got various axes as well as the throttle to control. And I thought about sitting on one of the back segments and putting some sort of steering column on one of the front segments. But it's quite bendy, which means the steering wheel is going to actually move as I steer, which is going to be quite tricky. So instead, I'm just going to make it wireless and use the good old Open Dog 3 remote, which has got various axes of control. And that means I don't have to bend my body while I'm steering. And also, I can just drive it with radio control as well. And that's what the radio Radio chip is for on that Arduino. To send serial data between those Arduinos, the main one is just doing a lot of serial prints and I'm using Megas because they've got lots of serial ports so that makes it really easy. So first of all it's sending 800 which is a value that none of the other variables will be and that's an identifier so that we know where the start of the data is and after that it's just sending the other values. On the receivers, I'm just checking their serial data and then doing a loop basically going round checking that we get that value 800 and it knows that that's the first value. After that, we can read the other values in order and we know all the data goes into the right place. So for now, I'm just printing those out to the serial terminal. So if we do a plotter and I move the sticks, we can see that we've got all that data and this is on one of those Arduinos receiving it over serial. So we've got various controls here to bend up and down, and we've also got a differential control to bend the two servos in opposite directions when I steer, so that it moves side to side like a snake, but when I move up and down, they both move together. I can also move that control to the right-hand stick so that I can use the throttle and the steering with one hand, and that's purely so I can drive it and film with a selfie stick in my other hand. In order to actually drive it though, I'm going to need a seat to sit on, so we're back to the workshop to cut up some steel and make some additional pieces to mount on top. Yep, I'm going to ride it like a motorbike, because motorbikes are cool. So I got this bike seat off eBay, I can't remember what bike it's from, but it's got these handy hooks in the bottom for mounting. So I'm going to make up some steel to fit on there, and so it can actually hook in on the mountings that it was intended to. So I've just cut up some steel there to fit all the parts approximately, and then I'm going to tack weld all of that together and try and see if I can fit it to the seat. 
The rest of the robot's already made from steel, so once I've made this and fitted it to the seat, we can just fit that onto the existing structure. So I'm going to cut out some slots here, which are for those hooks on the bottom of the bike seat. So hopefully we can hook them in, and if we get it right, we should be able to clip it on just like it would clip onto a motorbike, presumably. So we've got two slots in our piece of U-shaped metal that we now have, and those should fit pretty accurately into the two hooks. And the rest of the steel is supporting the seat, so that seems like it's going to work. So with that bracket attached, we can now try and place it onto the rest of the robot, and I can see how I'm going to sit on it. It's pretty low to the ground, so I'm going to be leaning forward quite a bit, and I need definitely to support the front of my body somehow, but I really don't want to attach it to the front of the snake, because then I'll be twisting left and right as I steer. But we're going to fix the seat on first, so I've added another bracket to the bottom here, and now I'm just going to tack that onto one section of the snake, of course, because it still needs to flex. So it's going to be fitted onto that section that's the second from the back. And I've put that at an angle so the seat's actually level, which is presumably how it should be. And that means that when I sit on it, it's a bit more like riding a bike. So I could ride it feet forward like a big old Harley with monkey hangers, or probably not, I'm going to ride it like a sports bike. So yeah, I definitely need to um, put my feet somewhere that isn't on the wheels, and I definitely need to support the front of my body because I just can't hold that position otherwise, it's impossible. So I've made another bracket which is going to fit also onto that section, and this is kind of a set of handlebars. So that fits into two holes that I've drilled on the same section that the seat's mounted on, and it gives me something to rest on. It does need to be quite high up though, so the snake can still flex upward and there's still clearance. And I've put some foot pegs in, which are just some tubes banged into the square section. Now they are on the back section, which is going to flex, but it's not too hard to move my feet backwards and forwards as it does so, so I don't think that's going to pose too much of a problem. So back to the electronics, we've got the Arduino Mega in a box with a breakout board for all of the I.O. and power made from some strip board. I've also got the two motor drivers wired in, a servo connector for the ESC for the hub motor and two pot wires. And there's three of those all together. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Onshape. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD and PDM platform built for business, created by the founders of SolidWorks because they saw that modern product developers still experience many challenges related to their CAD and PDM systems. Onshape is accessible across all operating systems and works like Google Docs, so an Onshape document is a single source of truth for your design data. Onshape is great for working with teams using hybrid or remote working. You can collaborate with team members at the same time on the same document across the world. Data management is built into Onshape. There's no need for file management on your local hard drive. Onshape uses a GitHub-inspired version and branch and merge model for fearless design experimentation. Onshape has industry-leading manufacturing-specific features for sheet metal and frame-based design, as well as surfacing, configurations, and detailed drawings. And Onshape is always improving. New releases are pushed to the product every three weeks to add new features and functionality. I highly recommend the engineers and product developers watching to consider using Onshape for their business. And you can try it for free at onshape.pro slash jamesbruton. Right, let's get on with the snake. I fitted the electronics in one section, this is upside down with the wheels in the air at the moment so the motor drivers will be on the plate of plywood which is where the motors are and everything else is on that plastic mount which goes up the other way. The ESC for the hub motor is on the bottom, which I'm not particularly convinced about, it's fairly recessed so hopefully I won't scrape it on anything. So I've got my controls for bending up and down which bends both servos in the same direction and that seems to work pretty well. And I can also bend left and right by twisting that stick, or the right hand stick if I switch the other switch to move the control over. So, so far that's looking pretty good. That just leaves us with three more sections to fit and one more hub motor to wire in for that full section at the front. But so far I'm pretty happy with the outcome. I did smooth out the values so that the data can't change too quick and it doesn't jerk around too much because the whole thing has quite a lot of mass. And I did a demo in my channel about this with an animatronic set of eyes that I designed a while ago so you can check that out. But basically what it does is take something like 90% of the previous value and only 10% of the new value when the values change. It does that on a loop that goes around and around. And that means the value can't change too quick and so we don't get really sudden motions. And you can see that servo moving and giving feedback to its feedback pot, which is controlled with the Arduino with a PID controller to position it. 
so these servos look like they should be pretty good for some fairly heavy duty animatronics. I've now fitted the second section which is pretty much the same as the first one with the electronics linked on that serial bus. So now we've got both hub motors which move together, so that's working okay. And we've got all of those servos moving together which you can just see the second one in the bottom of the shot. So as we can see all of those servos move in the same direction, so this second segment is going to link to the third segment and that means the whole thing is going to flex in unison with all of those sections moving together. The front sections are also wired in now so that third section has the electronics again and the front section just has the ESC and a battery. So with all of the sections moving together, I haven't linked them in the middle yet because I've still got to carry the whole thing downstairs and it's enough trouble in two halves. But we can see that all of those move in unison, so that should be good. So let's put it all together, we can see that it can bend up and down and it can also steer left and right and it can dry steer even though those wheels are actually really grippy and it's really heavy. There is a problem though which is one of those servos isn't moving properly in the middle section you can see just there. So it bends left and right okay but bending up and down is a real problem. So I'm just going to take the rod off there and see if the servo's working or what's happened. But it looks like that's working fine, so it seems like there's just too much load on it with certain moves when it's right in the middle of the robot. So we've got no problem moving to the full extent there, but when I put the whole thing back together, then that one doesn't push forward anymore. Now those motors on that section are actually getting really hot, which is a bit concerning because it means the motors are overdriven. The back ones are cold though, so I guess it's just a problem which the middle segment has got the load of the rest of the robot on when it's trying to arch its back, and the servos just aren't up to it, so it's probably not going to lift all of my weight. So it's time to give it a test outside, this is the first time I've driven it so I'm not going to ride on it to start with, I'm just going to drive it around remotely and try and get a hang of the steering and the throttle. I do have reverse as well so that's pretty good so we can do three point turns and things like that. You'll see the wheels are lifting off the ground slightly as it flexes, but obviously with the person on that will apply some extra mass to push them down. So it's time to put the seat on. And I've also attached some headlamps. Right, so with that sort of handlebar thing on, which isn't actually for steering, I can ride it okay. The only problem is I'm pushing my mass down quite a lot on that lever, which is tipping that second section from the back where the seat is attached and lifting the back wheels off the ground. Also, as I steer, it's moving my body in the opposite direction, of course, which is causing me quite a lot of problems and makes it really hard to ride. So yeah, you can see as I push down on there, it's lifting the back off, which you'd kind of expect. I'm pushing those servos back, and that steering rest is actually moving the opposite direction to the way I'm steering, which is really disconcerting, because it's like adverse camber. So we're going to take that off, and I'm going to try and find some other way of riding it. We need to find another way to ride it, and I definitely need to rest the front of me on something. I don't want to be too far forward because I don't want to bend too much, but I think I'm probably going to have to be because otherwise it's just really uncomfortable. So this is the most comfortable position, but I am going to have to bend my whole body left and right as I steer. But anyway, let's give that a go. So this is actually much more comfortable, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. And after going quite slow and just getting a hang of the steering and remembering to flex my whole body as I do so, it's actually not too bad. I could probably do with some foam armrests because the top of those headlamps are a bit sharp. But actually it's not too uncomfortable to ride and it feels like quite a natural riding position. It is of course possible to sit up on it and ride it like a go-kart, but it's a lot harder to take those corners because you're much higher up and so you've got a higher centre of gravity, so you really have to lean into it. So I much prefer riding it in bike mode. Now 
now I've had a bit of a go on it and got used to steering and driving, it's time to test out my skills with some cones. So steering works okay, but we've obviously still got this problem with flexing it in the other direction. It just about works with no load on it, but of course if I sit on it, then it doesn't really work at all. I also think that if we're going to have something that climbs over obstacles, we probably need more than one drive wheel on each segment, maybe tank tracks, and definitely some heavier duty servos. But in any case, it's a really fun radio control car to drive around. It's pretty dangerous because of all the mass, but it's definitely got enough power with all of those hoverboard motors. And I'm only running them on 6S LiPos when they're rated for 10S. We could run them up to 12 cell LiPos, and in that case we'd have twice as much voltage driving twice as much current, which would give us four times as much power. Because power is voltage times current. And because I made the whole thing quite modular, I can drive two sections around as well, which also makes a really fun radio control car, and probably one that's slightly less dangerous. And the steering seems to work perfectly fine, with those two driven wheels in opposite corners, and the two passive wheels in the other opposite corners, and just using the servos for steering. And there's no differential drive in any of this, because the motors for the wheels are just being driven in current mode, so they'll just go as fast as they can. Well, that was a super fun project to build. I think we're going to need another version, though, if we want to do anything more venturous than flat ground. So if it's going to climb over terrain and flex up and down, then we're probably going to need more traction than just those four hoverboard motors in the corners. Probably we need more like four motors per section or something else like tank tracks, as I said. And we're probably definitely going to need some stronger servos. So I'm going to try and develop something for bigger pieces of animatronics and robots like this that's still quite cheap. The wiper motors are only about £20, um, but is much stronger. So either that geared down or something with perhaps a ball screw like a linear actuator. So look out for that. I'm going to publish all the CAD and code for this project as I usually do. So that's in the link in the description to this video on my GitHub. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.